this is Michelle. She had uh, quite an accident on a scooter in Santa Monica, a big crash. It's been um, a rough road for her, and one of the remaining issues is her neck, and especially at night. It's a chronic problem. Um, we're going to try to find something different so we can correct this so she doesn't need so many chiropractic treatments. So when I test her, she's very strong, and she can turn her head to the side. She's kind of limited, kind of rigid, but she stays strong in most positions. Open your mouth. So what we're doing is we're looking for something that weakens her, some position of some kind. I'm going to compress her body this way and see what happens. Whoa, she goes very, very weak. I wasn't even pushing it at all. I'm going to compress her this way. I'm going to compress her this way. And I'm putting challenge tests to see if she can adapt. I'm going to rotate her. You rotate against me. And rotate against me. So it seems like this is her worst possible nightmare right there. Well, guess what? That is similar to sleeping. So let's try something. And have her lie on her right side, facing the camera, as if she's sleeping. This is a pillow now. And we're going to see what happens. Very strong. So let's turn her over to the face up. So she goes very weak. So that means every time she's on her left side, even for a moment at night, She's subluxating or putting her neck into spasms and the bones are literally going out of place. So what we have to do is we have to determine, is this the neck or is it the shoulder? Because when we're sleeping, we have a compression and an internal rotation of the shoulder. So I'm going to check the vertebrae. It doesn't seem to be a problem. I'm going to check the scapula. Ah. Oh. I found a scapular problem right there. Yeah. So she's going to hold her hand there. I'm going to lower the table a little bit. And we're going to adjust her scapula. And I'm doing a drop piece. The table is helping me. And we're going to see what happens. Hold it, hold it, hold it, hold it. OK, so let's stand up. Come on over here. And I'm going to compress her. <sighs> wow. Okay, so she had a shoulder that had out of place, which was moving up into the neck. Now, we're going to retest this shoulder, both shoulders, to see because that uh, bone that I adjusted is directly related to this position related to this position. Hold it. You're pushing back. Ah, oh, so she has a hidden subscapularis, which is one of the rotator cuffs, but it only shows in this position or lying down. So we have to figure out, hold this here, and you're going to turn this way. Even though I adjusted it, I didn't quite get it. I'm going to take this instrument, I'm going to put it right into there, and it's hitting her multiple, multiple times, fairly hard, but it's going so fast, it doesn't cause any pain whatsoever. Okay, turn around this way, relax, now I'm going to pull this, okay, so she had a functional subscapularis, or rotator cuff, shoulder, the neck was locking up because of the shoulder. And not to say that she doesn't have some other kind of problems, but so you can see her kind of squimish. Uh, if I turn her neck a little bit, she's highly stuck there. Let's do this. This would be a double shoulder see what happens. Whoa, they both go weak, but they don't go weak with just one. 
So in fact, I could do this, and she has absolutely no strength. I should not be able to do that. Hold it here. And what we're going to do is try to find. Open your mouth. Put your elbows up. Open your mouth. And close your mouth. Bite. So we have a hidden TMJ affecting the shoulders, and TMJ can easily cause a restricted neck motion. Fix okay. it, baby. Okay. <laughs> so, like you have everything else. <laughs> hold it. So we got to figure out, open your mouth wide. discovered it. It's not the normal TMJ. I think the mandible. And these bones right here. Everybody has one from the ear coming around to the cheekbone. There's a ridge called a zygomatic bone. I think hers has fallen in the injury. So she's going to lie down on her back. special TMJ facial adjustment to see if that affects the shoulders. Because when you fall from a scooter, a bicycle, or skateboard, and you get jarred in the shoulder very hard, and your head hit, might even hit something, you don't ever get over that unless somebody fixes it. So she's going to help me. You're going to take your index fingers in your mouth, about your second molar right there, and you're gonna every time you breathe in you're gonna pull apart while I'm pulling this bones up go and out we're gonna do it six times now any treatments of no value unless it works. So the only way we know if it works is to retest it. We can't say, oh, let's try it again next time. So I'd like you to stand up. So we're going to stand here. We're going to go into a bilateral subscapularis shoulder problem. Hold it. Open your mouth. Oh, and she's strong. Now she may have many other problems. Relax. But we found two things that we never knew she had, nor any other doctor. And it's only through testing, finding failures, and going through until there are no failures does somebody get well. No therapy, thanks, I never have to do that again. You don't understand energy medicine, but after doing this for 30 years, trust me, it works. It's unexplainable, but it works. Okay, thank you, Michelle. <laughs>